Jumpers, it's me, Kieran, and today we are going to discuss Key Shot by Salman Rushdie. Salman Rushdie's latest novel, and after the absolute horror show of The Golden House. I mean, he could have done... We don't talk about that book. We don't talk about The Golden House. We just... We just... We ignore it. Rushdie could have written anything, and it would, it would automatically make it a better book. But Key Shot is a book that just blows you out to the water because we finally get what Rushdie does best is take an idea and run with it. The selling point of this book is that it is a retelling of the 17th century novel Don Quixote by Cervantes, a satirical novel where a man reads so many books about knights and being chivalrous that he decides that's what I'm going to do in my life. And Don Quixote is born. Rides his horse into the sunset with his sidekick, Sancho, looking to joust what he believes a giant, but turn out to be windmills. Having read Don Quixote, why is no one mentioning the, the amount of poo jokes and fart jokes? I mean, the humour is timeless. There's, there's a moment where Sancho and Don Quixote are around a campfire and the climax of that chapter is Sancho fart in his face. There's another bit where they go to a bar? Yeah, like a tavern. They get into an altercation and then end up just throwing up on each other. Um, Quixote lacks poo, fart and sick jokes, therefore it's not going to be a 10 out of 10. Hmm. You've read Don Quixote, well done. You'll pick up a few more references. If you haven't, don't worry about it. All you need to know is that we're going to have a man who's caught up on something and starts his quest and that is key shot it's worth noting that within the preface Rushdie tells us that the pronunciation key shot comes from the French pronunciation of Quixote and that is what we should call his character so who is key shot key shot when we first meet him is not key shot he is Ismail smile which literally translates to as smile smile having a few altercations in his life but benefiting from nepotism Keyshot becomes a travelling salesman of Big Pharma, unhappy with his lot. He feels as though he needs something to fixate on, something to give him meaning and purpose. And what is that? Yes, people, it's us all at the moment. It's reality TV! We're suckers for it, we get really invested in people's lives and sometimes form really odd parasocial relationships with people online where we feel as though we can invade this space. We actually are friends with them. They have no idea who we are, but we know everything about them. Watching countless hours of absolute drivel TV and studying The Bachelor with an inch of its degree Ismail feels as though he knows what it is to find true love and he knows who his true love is. Salma are a TV star that has come from Bollywood fame over onto the American TV and Ismail is going on a road trip across America to fall in love with her and for her to fall in love with him. So we don't have the horse, we have a car. What about Sancho? Sancho does come into this, not in the way that you expect. Keyshot feels as though he needs someone. He can't find anyone, so he does what any logical person would do next. Just makes them up on the spot and there from his imagination, embodied into a being that wants to be a real boy, we have Sancho. Yes, an imaginary son who knows everything about his father because Sancho's thoughts are all of Keyshot's thoughts and there's no separation between the two. But Sancho wants to become a real boy. He wants a consciousness of his own. He wants his own memory, his own experience. He wants to be separated from the creator. And so he does. Can he find someone? No, because he's imaginary. So what does he do? He, he imagines someone. Wait, what's going on? And this is where Salman Rushdie can take something run with it, make it absolutely mad cow, and you just go along with it. Because we have Jiminy Cricket as the imaginary son of delusional key shots consciousness who speaks in an Italian accent. Okay, let's step back here. Salman Rushdie is writing a retelling of Don Quixote as the retelling of Don Quixote is retelling Pinocchio. No, because Salman Rushdie 
isn't writing, Keyshot. Oh, hang on, what's going on here? Let's have a quick water break before we crack on. Enter Sam Duchamp, a writer of spy novels who has made a fairly good living from writing, but has some difficulties in his personal life that he needs to sort, predominantly the lacking relationship that he has with his sister. And Duchamp feels as though if he writes Keyshot, he will be able He'll be able to find the answers that he cannot find within his life. Hold up, white ginger bearded fellow. You're telling me that Sam Duchamp is trying to find answers to his life. So writes Keyshot, who is trying to find answers to his life, who's imagining Sancho, who's trying to find answers to his life. A Jiminy Cricket is an Italian cricket who's the consciousness. Yes, but you also forgot that Salman Rushdie is writing about Sam Duchamp trying to find answers to his life. So we have stories within stories within stories, and we are going to spend pages battling between the two. There's a five-level multi-meta narrative. Yes, this is Salman Rushdie. It gets complex. Just deal with it. But if you've watched Inception, think of it like that. We're going to jump between each story, and as each person finds a solution or a proposed answer to the question that they're finding, it ultimately affects all the other stories. And as we move across this road trip in America towards the final pages, all of these people converge. How Salman Rushdie ties these knots together, sometimes very practical, very obvious, sometimes they're very subtle or leave you many pages wondering why. Keyshot, and I mean the novel, not the character, is trying to deal with questions, arguments, propositions and unknowns. By means of interrogation and trying to extract the information, we have a satirical bombshell. Now, I want to say this because it's something that I still struggle to separate. Satirical doesn't have to mean laugh out loud, ha ha ha, isn't he so funny? Comedy and humour are always subjective, so is this funny? You should read the book to make up that decision. Rushdie mocks, he makes farce of, he points the fingers at many things within this, such as gender norms, Big Pharma, Trump administration, racism within America. To give you a bit of insight in that one, because I think that scene, like, as a whole, just works. Keyshot is met by the champions of Make America Great Again. But within this town, there's an ambivalence to if they're turning into animals, which is a nod to Ionesco's play Rhinoceros, which again is a satirical work. Keyshot, in his delusion, is trying to make sense of all of this, and the only person who seems to be able to get some sense, if any, into Keyshot's head is his imaginary son, who's drawing on his own experiences which were his father's thoughts, which is Keyshot, that's also Sam Duchamp, which is Salman Rushdie. Rushdie's also taken punches at TV culture and how people are political commentators when really you've watched like one video online by someone who's also a political commentator who really is just posting something to their Instagram page. We go there. That's it, that's all the work I need to do. While there's that level to deal with, he also goes further and attacks media companies with the complete saturation of fake news and how you could just say something and people just take it as truth. Ultimately, what you get in the world of AG, which is after Google, is just people screeching from both sides. <laughs> that in a world of nuance, we just like binaries, don't we? We go, you're that, and they go, well, you're that. Discussion, there's no debate, there's no argument, it's just confrontation. It's you are them, we are us. And despite a few things that trickle within this book, we see people being pushed over like pinball machines. Because you have to be a binary, you have to be left, you have to be right, and you can't have that thought. If you have this thought, and if you have this thought, that means you're subjective to this. And this want to be a binary left or right, because in American politics, that's definitely how it mostly works with Democrats, Republicans. And there's nothing in between. It, it doesn't seem to want to work. And what Rushdie calls the age that anything can happen, in an age where literally anything can happen, we just end up sat on our phones, watching TV, in the same circles that we're always in, 
talking about the same stuff to people who probably agree with us. I think in contemporary times, this is an essential read. If you're a little bit bookish, which feels like a moot point because like you're watching a Salman Rushdie review, you probably are. There's conversations about do you separate the art from the artist? And if you can't, are all these characters to go the same way as Salman Rushdie? Can he even find anything about himself? Or are we just moving into a place where you can only write autofiction or memoir and that the age of imagination's dead? I read this in 2019 and was floored by it. And I recently read it again to review and it's held up even more. Um, this is like, it's an easy nine. It's an easy nine. Salman Rushdie proven again that he's a great author. If you take away the golden house, we don't talk about the golden house. We'll never talk about the golden house. I'm not talking about it.